My name is Cameron Caldwell, and I'm a junior in the College of Business here at Jackson State University. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about my school. Jackson State University was founded in 1877 and is located here in Jackson, Mississippi. One interesting thing about Jackson State is that before it became this Carnegie designated high research institution, an alma mater to famed running back Walter Payton, it actually started out as a small church school in Natchez, Mississippi for newly freed slaves. Co-creator and executive producer Felicia Henderson is taking you behind the scenes with the Quad's office hours. Next. Welcome to another edition of Office Hours. As you know, every week I'm repping a different HBCU, but tonight is a little different because I have a very special guest. And her name is Gwendolyn Carr, or Mrs. Carr as I call her. And she is Eric Garner's mother, and she's gonna sit down and talk to me about Eric's life and his death. Thank you for joining me. I will remember that day as long as I live. Yeah. Uh, that day for me started out as a normal day. I woke up, I got up, I did a few chores. I decided to call Eric because I hadn't heard from him in a few days. I called him, he answered, and I began to question him why I hadn't heard from him in the last few days. He reminded me, he says, remember Ma, I told you I was going to Baltimore. So I says, oh, I said, Eric, you know, I completely forgot mm -hmm. that you were going to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I reminded him, I said, well, don't forget that Saturday is our family reunion at the park. Yes. So he says, oh, I didn't forget, Ma. Mm -hmm. He says, what do you need me to bring? And I replied, just bring soda and water. Mm -hmm. We got the rest. We chit-chatted a little while. And then we said our goodbyes. He says, okay, love you, Ma. See you Saturday. I said, love you too, Eric. Mm -hmm. Hung up, never dreaming that that would be our final conversation. Mm -hmm. Never dreaming instead of having a family reunion on that Saturday, Saturday that we had a march in Staten Island to protest his death. Mm -hmm. That was one of the saddest things in my life. Eric was my firstborn. I just thought he was such a joy. You know, you know, when you have your first child, wow, this is me, yes. this is mine, you know. And he was born in September, so the first Christmas, he was only three months old. I dressed him up like a little Santa Claus. <laughs> um, we had family over, I brought him, he wasn't even big enough for a walker, but I bought him a walker that looked like a spaceship. <laughs> I just went all out because he was my first child. That boy used to could sit down and tell me every toy he has gotten since he could remember. <laughs> him and his brother say, yeah, when we was seven and eight, we got this and that. When we was eight and nine, we got, I don't even remember all of that. Really? And um, I know I used to just love to take pictures on Christmas morning to see their eyes. One Christmas, I think they was seven and eight. The boys had asked me for big wheels. I yes. Says, okay. So I went uh, up on Bushwick, that's in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. I wanted to get one of the top of the line big wheels. Oh this my gosh. Was, um, called the Flint Cycle. It was just a big wheel, but it was made like the Flintstone mold. Yes. It had like the rock wheel, you know, the yes. rock I, wheel. Yes, I, you don't oh, even understand how that. well I remember oh, this. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> I got those for them. I says, oh, I want to see their faces on Christmas. Morning. Yes. So when they got up, they ran in there, they looked at them, they jumped on them, and my, they saying all these little sayings, oh baby, oh wow, look what we got. All right. So Eric looked at his younger brother and says, I, now I know we're rich. <laughs> and <laughs> we live in a public housing now. And his younger brother looked back at him and says, I knew it all the time, stupid. <laughs> and I thought that was, you know, I just laughed at it. Yes. From the beginning of um, thinking about what this episode would be um, and then having, you know, what's really important um, to us is to 
do more than entertain. Yeah. And so when we decided to do this episode, I thought about your story. And um, I hate even saying the word story because it's not a story. It's a reality. It's a reality. Yes. It's hard to ask you questions because I want you to tell me what I should know. What should we know as an audience? That day when I got the call, I, was, I worked for New York City Transit Authority. Yes. I operate the train from Coney Island to Astoria. Mm -hmm. So I got on the train, I got to Astoria. I have like a 30 or 35 minute break when I get there. Yes. Well, that day when I turned my phone on, to my surprise, my phone is blowing up. So I answered one call. Um, the first person told me, well, you know, um, I just heard that something happened with Eric. I don't know, but it was some kind of interaction with the police. Mm. When I hung up the phone, another person called me, but they had basically the same information the first person had. Uh -huh. You know, but they were just calling me, like, to inform me. Yes. And I says, well, wow, I got to get to Staten Island to see what's going on. So I called my husband. He was in Brooklyn at the hospital with my brother at the time. I had asked him to take him to the clinic that day. And I told him, please get to, to Staten Island to find out what happened to Eric. Then I thought real quick, I said, no, come to my job, pick me up yes. to bring me home. Call Larry, which is my brother-in-law. Tell him to go and find out what yes. happened to, to Eric until we get there. So I went in the office and I told him I have to go home. Something happened to my son. I don't know what it is, but I got to go and find out. Yes. My husband was there. So I get downstairs, he's telling me, get in your seatbelt and whatnot. I said, well, did you hear anything? And I'm asking, what did Larry say? But, you know, I'm just- You're not getting any I'm answers. I'm not getting any answers. So anyway, as we're driving down the street, and so he he sees I'm, I'm in an uproar, I'm in a rage. And so he just breaks down and cries. So then when he does that, I know something is wrong. I said, well, what happened to Eric? And he just told me, well, Eric is no longer with us. Mm. I think I just lost it at that point. I don't remember too much about right then, but yeah. I remember trying to kick the windshield out. I remember mm. trying to get out the door. He made sure I was in my um, seatbelt seat belt before he told me, and he put the child lock on so that mm. I couldn't get out the side door. Because at that moment, it felt like if I got out that car, I could run to Staten Island faster than I could get there mm. in that car. When I got there, I just was a mess. They would not let me go to the hospital. They wouldn't, I didn't know any real details. All I knew is that my son was dead and that's all that mattered to me. Later on that evening, as the news media kept knocking on my door, trying to get in, I didn't want to talk to anyone. Of course. My brother-in-law came to me and says, well, Gwen, I think we should just let one of the news medias in and let them know how we feel about it and let us know what they know. So it just so happened we did let the right one in. We let, let the one outlet in. Yes, and it was the Daily News. The Daily News is the one that had the exclusive about the video. Uh -huh. They had talked to Ramsey Otto, which is my hero, and they had gotten the video from him and they told us that it would be in the paper at five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. frame by frame. It would be on the news at 7 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. and we could see exactly what mm -hmm. happened to Eric, never knowing it was to that magnitude. And then when it came on TV, which I have never to yet seen the full video. Really? Never. Uh-huh. And I seen that and I was just screaming at the TV and I was saying, please y'all stop, let him go, leave him alone. Yes. Don't. It was horrible. This is really how you're getting the information of the details because the day before you didn't have any details. I didn't have so any details and the police were lying. They were saying that they were trying to arrest Eric and he died of a heart attack. He fell out and died of a heart attack. Because they didn't know what you would eventually learn. That's right. And when they went to the police station, 
this is what the story they told and everyone who was there corroborated their story. Really? I heard that directly from a police officer myself. I've always been a private person. Yes. Until this had happened to my son. And now I feel like I have to get out here and try to save someone else's life. Try to educate, try to inform. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to see another mother suffer like I have. Yes. And there are so many mothers out there who suffer as I do. Didn't get one day of publicity in the paper, yes. on TV. And if you listen to the stories, one story is worse than the other. And they are really hurting. So we joined together. There are six of us who are the circle of the mothers, but we are the face of the yes, circle of, of many, mothers. many but more. There are thousands yes. of mothers of the movement. Yes. And I just want people to know that some mothers are still in bed. Some mothers are under medication. Mm -hmm. They can't even get out of bed, but thank God. He left me with my right mind. Yes. I went to the doctor when I was first hurting, and he did give me some medication. But I came home, I never took it. Mm. I want to be lucid mm -hmm. when I talk to people, when I interact with people who are hurting, so I can explain to them what I went through yes. and how I got through it and how I would try to help them through it. Yes. And um, that's my plan because I know my son, he would be proud to know that I am trying to uphold his name and trying to do the right thing for others because he was a friend to all.